Welcome back to Miniature Wargaming New Zealand. My name is Richard and this video is an introduction to a great conflict simulation game by Game Designers Workshop called The Third World War Battle for Germany. It was published in 1983. Research and design was by Frank A. Chadwick and the art director was Paul R. Banner. The game is part of a series starting in the north with Arctic Front, then this game Battle for Germany then Southern Front, and finally Persian Gulf. Each of the games can be played independently, or they can be played together, with the maps for all but Persian Gulf able to be joined up. The game is set in 1990, and covers Central and the northern part of Southern Europe. NATO commands include the southern part of AF North in Northern Germany and Denmark, AF Sent in the main part of Germany, and the northwestern part of AF South covering northern Italy. Reinforcements appear from off-mapped countries, Spain, the UK and continental USA or CONUS, with CONUS reinforcements including POMCUS or pre-positioning of material configured in unit sets and ship transported units. Soviet commands include Group Soviet Forces Germany or GSFG, Central Group of Forces or CGF in Czechoslovakia, and Southern Group of Forces, or SGF, in Hungary. Forces from Warsaw Pact allies are included, as well as reinforcements from Western military districts of the Soviet Union. We start at the northern end of Central Europe, with the northern Danish region of Norjylland. The scene pans down along the inner German border, past the North German plains, the forested hills around Kassel, past the Fulda Gap, and the open plains leading to Frankfurt, down into southern Germany, Austria, the Alps, and finally into northern Italy. Starting in the west, we move east from Lille, through Belgium, the Netherlands, across the Rhine, and along the Ruhr Valley, marked by Dusseldorf and Dortmund, into the north German plains, past Hanover, Bremen, and Hamburg, before turning south again, past the Fulda Gap, leading to Frankfurt, Mannheim, and the Rhine. Setting up NATO first, with fixed initial positions, we see the spread of forces across Denmark and the Federal Republic of Germany, through the Netherlands, Belgium and France, panning south to Austria and Italy before finishing in Yugoslavia. NATO air support is set up next in the Western Theatre with the US Air Forces in Europe, the Royal Air Force, Luftwaffe, Armée de l'Air, plus remaining nations, and in the Southwest Theatre, the Italians. Turning the NATO counters over, we have the Danish forces, the German forces around Lübeck and Kiel, the British Army of the Rhine, the US sector, forward deployed French Army, and further here units. Panning south into Austria and down to Yugoslavia before moving west over the Italian forces. Whilst panning, the units are made up of three factors attack, defence, and proficiency. Unit sizes per counter are denoted by the symbol on top of the box, with an X being a brigade, three vertical lines being a regiment, and two X's being a division. Finally, pinning north through France, all the way to western Belgium, through the Netherlands and back to the British Army of the Rhine, down to the Fulda Gap and Frankfurt Mannheim. Next is the Soviet 16th Air Army, supporting Group Soviet forces in Germany, with Warsaw Pact allies. These are placed at air superiority first, so are set up in their final starting allocations. NATO air units are then placed into air superiority. Having accepted the Warsaw Pact will gain air superiority in turn one. NATO have kept some strike and multi-role aircraft back. Soviet and Warsaw Pact ground forces are now positioned, with units based in Poland first, then those opposite Hamburg, moving south along the inner German border
Southern group of forces are arrayed along the Hungarian border with Yugoslavia, ready for an invasion. Panning west, we see the remaining Yugoslavian forces in the west and the initial Italian forces. Finally, we review the Fulda Gap with the US 3rd Armoured What now follows is the NATO forward movement, weather determination, theatre air superiority and deep strike phases. So having set them up, um, it's now NATO forward movement, so we're going to try and move him. Two plus three is um, five, so that's fine, so he can move. So he's going to come up through here, one, two, three, then we're going to try and move the British unit, six plus three is nine, so he fails to move, we're going to move, um, we're going to move, alright, We're going to try and move the um, British division in here. So, 8. So, he rolled a 1 plus 3. There's 4, so he can move. So, he's going to go into Branch Fag. So, he's 1, 2, 3. So, he's moved. Then we're going to try and move the German division, the 7th Panzer. So 5 plus 3 is 8, so he fails to move up. Uh, this is getting a bit holy. So we're going to move the 2nd um, armoured, the Americans. So 1 plus 3 is 4, so he can move. So how far can he get? Uh, I think he's got a hole to plug over here. So he's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One, two, three, four,
So now we're going to try and move these guys forward. So the first armoured, he's rolling, so he rolled a 3, plus 3 is 6, so he can move. He's going to go up into the hills and woods in the front line. We're going to move this guy here, the 12th Panzer. So unfortunately he rolled a 5, plus 3 is 8, so he can't move. And we're going to roll for the... Uh, where are we? We're going to roll for this panzer unit, the 10th panzer. So he rolled a 5 as well, so he can't move. 5 plus 3 is 8. Uh, we're running out of units to move. This is getting holy down here. So, just slide the camera back a bit. So, we're going to roll for the fourth. He rolled a three. Plus three is six, so he can move. So, he goes. Going to have to form a line somewhere. So, he goes one, two, three, four, five. Try and hold it at Regensburg. Right, where it narrows. So, down here, the first Jibergs, so we're going to roll them. Oh dear, so 6, and plus 3 is 9, so they definitely don't move. So we're going to try and move the third attack helicopter regiment. So, that was a lot better, so 2 plus 3 is 5, so that's 7, so they go 1, 2, Three. Um, so the American seventh um, attack helicopter, the mobile brigade. Uh, three plus three is six, and he's seven, so he's going to go up with the second armored can. One, two, three. So that's. And they're holding Nuremberg. In fact, three, in fact, he's going to carry on four, five, so he's going to go right up to the front line. And the second armored cav is going to have a go as well, so. So he rolled a three, so he's going up as well into the woods and hills. So that's pretty good. Right, and where's he supposed to be? He's supposed to be in 1510 in Stuttgart. That's a mistake. And he's supposed to be in 12th, I think, so he's in Munich. Right. So the French unit down here the third armoured division. So he rolled a two plus three. So great, he gets up there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So he can hold the half gap, I think. So up he goes into the gap. Right, so now we're going to try and move this US 8th mechanised up. So he rolled a 4 plus 3 is 7, so that's enough. So luckily he gets 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So he gets up there to the front line to plug the hole. So we've got a hole over here. And we've got a bit of a hole over here. So, we'll see what we can do. So further back, we've got some other units that can maybe move. Right. So, 
these guys are on top of a pomacus unit. These guys can do something, so So the second uh, French helicopter regiment, attack helicopter regiment. So three plus three is six, so they can go. So one, two, three, four, five, six into Nuremberg. The um, second Ricky Brigade, second Corps Ricky Brigade. So one plus three. There's four, so he can move. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's only going to get that far. And the fifth armor division, which is actually brigade size. So he rolled a five plus three is eight, so he doesn't move. All right, Saarbrücken, down the back here. He's still in Germany, so he's the first mech division. So he rolls a 3 plus 3 is 6, so he can move forward. So he's going to see how far he can get. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. He's probably going to get into Mannheim and hold Mannheim just in case. And the 4th CMB, the 4th Canadian, these guys rolled A1 so they can charge off. So they can go 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. They could get to Augsburg and get past Augsburg, but they don't want to. Or they could go one, two, three, four, five, six into the open. Hmm. No, best in Augsburg. And the planes around Augsburg. Right. So these guys are on Pomkus. They're on Pomkus. This guy is in Frankfurt. So he probably wants to hold on to Frankfurt just for now. Until someone else comes forward. Um, right, we've got one more at the top here that we probably want to try and move. It's the um, first attack helicopter regiment, the Germans. So he rolls a one. And he's going to just disappear into Kiel, just to make sure that Kiel doesn't get taken. And that might be about it for the NATO forward movement in Germany. So we'll have a look at him. He could go one, two, three, four, five, six. It'll be a better line. Or into here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. Yeah, so we'll try and move him. So he rolled a two, so off he goes. He's going sideways. Um check that guy, yeah, he's a full division, so off he goes, so one, two, three, four, five, six, so he goes to there, and that's forming a sort of line there, that's the best we could probably do, considering, so the only units left are holding cities, bunker sites, and are often helicopters or um, paratroopers so so that's it for NATO forward movement now it's time to do the other starting 
section start to play. Right, so now we need to choose the um, the neutrals chits. So we're going to choose that one for Austria and put those away, and then for Yugoslavia. We're going to choose that one. Right. So we're actually going to declare an invasion. We're going to invade Yugoslavia over there. But we're not invading Austria. And we'll turn the other counters over. So, Yugoslavia is going to be invaded. She would have stayed neutral, but it's too late. She's being invaded. And the rest of it's ready to go. The Soviet units are all roughly aligned to the uh, original groupings, so down in the south of East Germany it's 8th Guard followed by 1st Guard tank and then it's 3rd Shock next up in the middle with 20th Guard behind slightly to the northwest towards Hanover and then 2nd Guard in the north and following on behind we have the Poles And then in the south, there's the 41st and the 10th, with the 8th Guard tank. And then right down south, it's the 16th and 21st armies, facing off against the Yugoslavians. The Yugoslavs. The NATO forces are all a bit scattered at the back. And of course, the Low Countries and France don't have the forward movement, so can't react. So, announce invasion or entry into war, done. Receive new air units, none. Don't need to roll for maintenance, don't need to destroy anything, repair craters, consolidate, roll for weather. So, I say it's lucky they rolled a two. So the two means clear weather. All is right for the battle. So now next is the restraint phase, optional, so I'm not gonna play the nuclear side of the game, so that's fine. And then theatre air superiority. So Pact places air units in air superiority. So what I've done over here and then NATO units do the same which we've done so for your superiority the pact has 25 units uh, that can um, go into your superiority and NATO has 23. So the pact put all theirs up bar 1, the SU 24 down the bottom there on the second and from the left next to the um, blackjack. So then NATO decided not to bother putting as many in to its air superiority box so that it's got a balanced force. And in the southwest theatre, the Soviets put three up, kept one back and available. And NATO put one in each as a force of being. Right, so the Soviets, they've got two strike aircraft. Well, two very good ones. So they're going to put in 
um, the two SU-27s they're going to fly support for their blackjack and there two two of the MiG-29s are going to fly support so they're going to do um, they're going to do both going to do runway cratering just for fun so uh, the Americans are going to okay, what we're going to do is we're going to put 5 and 4 and 5 and 4 so the Americans are going to put up their eagles but they can't fly their own missions, they can only fly intercepts. Alright. So. The Americans. The F-15s firing at the SU-27s. So they rolled a 2. Which comes out as abort. But since they're the same um, number, they roll back and they roll a four, which is shot down halved. So they abort and uh, go into the flown box, but they go shot down. And then over here, so oh, he gets to fire then, sorry. So five with a four. Is shot down halved as well, so you stay shot down. Right over here, we've got the F 15. He rolls a four, so shot down halved against him. So back a six, so he's shot down immediately. So he's shot down immediately, and both of them are shot down, and he's shot down as well. So the two MiG 29s go flowing, and now the Blackjack he's doing runway cratering, so does anything happen to him? Five is an abort, so he goes flying, and the SU 24, so he rolls a one, so he goes through. Right now, three dice because he's got a factor of three strike. And a four or five adds a crater. So crater into the western area. So we just move the counter up to here for one. That means one all cratered. Right, and he goes flying. And that was that. Pretty bloody. The Americans had both the F-15 shot down. And the Russians had an SU-27 shot down. In total, the Russians had uh, five aircraft units go flying to the American two. Well, that concludes the setup and initial segment for GDW's Third World War Battle for Germany. Look out for part two of this video where I run through the initial action, starting with the initial player segment for the Soviets. I hope you've enjoyed watching. My name is Richard and this is Miniature Wargaming New Zealand.